Welcome back to FDR Tech. This is a continuation of the video on our NEC PC8300. Today what we're going to do is load a program from cassette tape to our computer and play it. Now if you haven't seen the video on this portable computer, I suggest you do. I'll leave a card up above to go ahead and check that out. But let's go ahead and check this out. So previously I mentioned that we were going to send a data program from our cassette to the computer. So how does that work? Well, using the cable that came with it right here, it plugs into the back of it, into the cassette port. From there, there's three different leads. You have red, white, and black. Red is used to send data from the computer to the cassette recorder via the line in. White is what actually sends the audio signal out to the computer. And black is for remote control. Now the remote control, from what I understand, only works with a PC8281A cassette player that NEC produced for this computer itself. But you can use any cassette recorder you want. So today we're just going to go ahead and use the white port. So how does this all work? Well, it sends an audio signal or sound to the computer that this thing understands and runs a program. What does that sound like? Well, it sounds quite terrible. You want to hear it? Why not? Let's go ahead and get our cassette tape, load it, and play it. Now, the sound is like an old school modem. It's loud, screechy, as you would probably imagine. So if you're wearing headphones or you have your speakers turned up pretty high, go ahead and turn them low now. I'll put a five count on the screen. And at the end of five, we'll go ahead and play this thing. So go ahead and get your volume adjusted appropriately. I'll start the timer. Okay, last chance to pause. Here we go. Let's go ahead and play and hear what this thing sounds like. You still with me? Okay. Go ahead and turn your volume up. That'll be the end of that. We won't be doing that anymore. But basically that screechy sound is what's going to be transmitted to the computer here. So let's go ahead and take our white cable here, plug it into the monitor or earphone jack of a cassette recorder. And talking about cassette recorders, how could I forget? This cool little device is my Sony TC-110V cassette recorder. This is an amazing little machine. It needs a belt replacement, but even with the belt acting kind of wonky as it is, this thing works great. You can also check out this cool little thing in the card over here. This is a neat, neat little recorder and I'm glad to have it. So if you noticed maybe a second ago, the tape had a bunch of numbers on it with writing. Let's have a look at it. It's a normal audio cassette tape. Nothing too special about it. it. has two sides, an A and a B. And on it, it has numbers and a bunch of different writing. So what that is, is these are the program files and some are data files too. So the way it works is we pop this thing in and I wanna play number seven, music. That's the program I wanna load. Actually, let's leave that open so you guys can see that. So according to side B, music is number 067 on the counter. Now that is on a counter for a PC821A cassette recorder that would go along with this. And so the 067, which would be on the counter here, is made for that specific uh, cassette recorder, but it's gonna be a bit off. About, let's see, 67, 70, 80, 90, 100. So about 40, 40 marks off. So it's going to be a bit off. This is playing at about 111, whereas the music program would play at 067. But I got it close enough. So we go ahead and load our tape. We move it to where we believe it's going to play the data. Now the thing is, is if we miss the mark, it'll ask us, is this the program we're supposed to load? If not, it's just going to skip. Well, let's go ahead and show how that works. So we're on our main screen. What we're gonna do is like in the last one is we're gonna hit load. And by last one, I mean the last video. 
hit load. It's going to ask load from. I want to load from cassette. So for cassette, we'll type CAS colon and the name of the program. The name of the program here is music. So M U S I C. And it's going to be a basic file. So dot B A. So we said load music from cassette. Name of the file is music.ba. Hit enter. Save as. We'll save it as the same thing. Music.ba. Enter. It's going to ask, ready. We're going to say, we're ready. It clicks, which I assume is getting the relay for this to turn on. We'll go ahead and press play. And it's just going to listen for data. When it sees, I believe, the header for that file come up, it's going to say loading. So we'll play, and now it's just listening. So it's at 108, 109, 110, and around 111, it should pick up the program. There we go, found music. So now it's loading our program. So this will take about a minute 30 for it to load the program onto it, according to the little document right here. So as it does that, we'll go ahead and speed up a little bit and see what happens. And there's a slight little click in the background there. That means the program is loaded. If you can see right here on the screen, it says music.ba. Let's go ahead and load our music.ba program. Loaded from cassette. And Right away, there we go. Our music program is now loaded. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail of how the program works, but let's go ahead and play something. So we're gonna input I, which means I want to input music. Let's say new data, because I want a new file. We're gonna call it shark, shark. And do you want to see the input explanation? We could say yes for the first time. So basically the way it works is these are the letters on your keyboard. They correspond to musical notes. So example, Z is C, S is C flat or minor, D, uh, minor D, and so on, all the way through B. So if you look on the keys of a keyboard, you'll have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. I'll show a keyboard right here. So those are the keys of your keyboard. So that's how it's corresponding. So if I want to play a C note, I hit Z. If I want to play a D note, I hit X, and so on and so forth. When I'm done, I'll hit E, and that ends the line. I can input up to 49 notes. So this just explains the rest of it. You hit Q to enter or to exit, hit escape to re-enter the last note, and space is a rest. So you also have some other options. You can change the length of the note using one through nine. You could change the octave of it. And then it gives you some more uh, options here. L and O changes the length and the octave. So that's what it's gonna ask for. So it's gonna be length of the note is five octave two. For right now, we're just leave that as the basic. I don't want to change that yet, since it doesn't really make a huge difference from what I hear. Let's go ahead and enter our first notes. So, Baby Shark, I'll go ahead and show it on the screen here, in its simplest form, is C, D, F, 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 and then it repeats again. C, D, F, 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 F. Third line again. The fourth line is F, F, E. So that's Baby Shark. Pretty simple song. We'll also play uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That one has uh, multiple notes um, in succession, like C, C, D, D, E, E, so on and so forth. But for now, let's go ahead and try this because, well, this was a catchy little tune. Okay, my cheat sheet is loaded here, which is the book. So according to the Baby Shark here, it's C, D, and then F. So a C is going to be a Z, so Z, and then it plays the note as you do it, and so it shows I entered a C note. So let's play a D, that'll be uh, X, X, and then F. 
So V, and it's going to be V how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So one, two, seven. So there's our notes, C, D, F, 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 and then it's going to repeat again. C, D, F, 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 F. So let's go ahead and type that again. So six, seven, eight, oh, eight times. Well, seven's fine. That's a lot of, that's a lot of F keys. So now we're going to go for the last line. So the last line is F, F, and then E. So F, F, and E. So let's go ahead and do F, F, and then E is going to be a, let's see, two, four, five. So it's one, two, three, four, C. There you go, that sounds different. So it's C, D, F, 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 repeats, repeats, and then F, F, E. So baby shark, do, 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 baby shark, do, 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 and at the end, baby shark. So let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like. Probably gonna sound that great, but to end the program, we'll hit E. There we go, baby shark. Now, how does that sound on the piano? Well, let's go ahead and check that out. So here is baby shark on the piano. So obviously a huge difference between a piano and the PSR 290. Let's go ahead and do twinkle twinkle little star on the PSR 290. Okay, so let's try something maybe that has more notes to it. Uh, let's try Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Now that's a song that pretty much anyone learning piano always learns, learns first because it teaches you all the keys in succession typically. So put it up on the screen right here. As you see, it's start with middle C, which would be on a piano, but it's going to be C, C, G, G, A, A, G, and then it changes to F, F, E, E, D, D, so on and so forth, so it changes. So at least we'll hear some different notes as the thing plays. So I'll enter the first line and then I'll speed it up and enter all the other lines. And then we'll go ahead and resume normal speed and play the song. So let's go ahead. First, it's gonna be C, C, and then G, G. So C, C, that's going to be a Z, Z. And then we're gonna do G, G. So it's B, so that already sounds a lot better. <laughs> uh, A, so that's, uh, A would be N, N, and then G again. G again was what I said, B, uh, yeah, B. So as our first line, let's go ahead into the second line. So let's go ahead, E, and hear what it sounds like. And hear my mistakes. Hey, it actually came out pretty good. So here's how Twinkle Twinkle Little Star would sound on a piano. So there you go, obviously huge difference. Let's go ahead and get back over to the computer. 
So that is our cassette recorder loading data from this tape to our PC8300. Pretty cool for the time and still pretty neat today because this is something I never really got to experience. I've always experienced programs on either floppy disks or just dial up internet at least from a long time ago. But learning from cassette tape is a pretty cool little idea. Well, that's all for the NEC PC8300. Like I said before, if you haven't seen this video, go ahead and check out this computer on the card here and also this cassette recorder on the card up there. And if you like these types of videos, go and check out the other videos that I have. Until next time, this is FDR Tech saying have a great day and thank you for watching.